Printers are always a nuisance, aren't they? Uh, I've had this Oki Microline 280 since probably about 1998-ish. Uh, this is a model that was made in the early 90s. Uh, I think it was actually a successor to some that they made in the 1980s. Uh, and they actually carried on making it in the form of the 280E Lite in the 2000s. And more recently, which I only found out recently, they made a 280 Eco version in the 2010s. And uh, they've all been discontinued now, unfortunately. But uh, this is sort of a product line that's had a, a very, very long lifespan. And uh, this is an interesting printer because it's actually quite a, a small a small form factor. Um, it's a 9-pin impact printer. Um, has, If we have a look around the back you can see it's got a parallel port. The um, newer ones have uh, USB ports. This here is a gap where you can put a serial port in. I did have the card which goes in there but unfortunately it got thrown out some years ago. And that connector there is actually for a stand, because on here you can put um, multiple different things. You can have uh, a cut sheet feeder, which will automatically load individual sheets, like these, which we normally used to. Uh, you can have a roll of paper. Uh, I do have some rolls, but uh, I don't have the stand anymore. That got thrown out. And uh, there's another tray which you can use for loading individual sheets in as well. And um, Interestingly enough, if we turn it upside down, you'll see there's a big slot in the bottom. Uh, you can actually feed tractor paper in through the bottom. So if you put this on a stand, you can feed the paper in through the bottom and then out the top. Or you could put the paper behind the printer and have it come in and then back out. So you can do pretty much whatever you want with it, but this has never worked. Well, it kind of sort of works. The alarm light is lit because there's no paper in. Um, so, we'll just put a sheet of paper in and see if it'll pick it up. There we go, that's loaded up and the alarm light's gone off and we can press put it online. There we go, so uh, all's good now, but for well, ever since I got it in the late 90s, it's never worked properly. The alarm light always flashed. And you could never change the settings. If you turn that off, you can change the um, type, style, and um, so on. Um, it always flashed, and I never quite figured out why. And it would print, but it would only do so ridiculously, uh, ridiculously slowly. So to do uh, one line and then sit and wait for ages. And then it would go back and do another line, and then sit and wait for ages. And then sit, go back and do another, and sit and wait for ages. Well, I don't know what the problem was. Um, the manual says it might be a temperature issue. And the thing is, these heads here can get quite hot. It even has a warning on that says, um, caution hot. And there's actually a thermistor in here, which connects down onto the printer's circuit board to tell the printer how hot it is. So a few years ago I actually wondered if it might be a fault. I thought the printer's practically dead and practically useless anyway, so I thought I'll take it to pieces and it doesn't really matter if I break it. Um, unfortunately, in the process of doing that I managed to break one of the pins off, so this, what was a 9-pin printer, is now an 8-pin printer. Um, I can't remember if I disconnected the thermistor or if I replaced it, I really can't remember. But I put it back, I put the head back in, and uh, whatever it is I've done, lo and behold, the printer works. The alarm light no longer flashes, and it prints absolutely fine, albeit with a missing pin. So I thought what I'll do is I'll just give a quick demonstration of it, and then I'll take the head apart, and I'll show you what's, uh, what's actually inside the head, and then I'll see if we can get a replacement head, because I actually need a printer. Uh, I've got an assortment of really old printers, I haven't got any new printers, um, and none of them work properly, and I really need a working printer, so uh, because this model was very well supported and you can get spare parts, I'm going to see if I can get a replacement head, and maybe we'll uh, be able to use this for something useful. So, this, this is the uh, original ink ribbon, it just comes out. It's got a little plastic protector thing on, uh, which keeps coming off matter about that. This is actually the original ribbon from the 1990s. I have actually used this to, to print on odd occasions since I got it, but um, I've never used it enough to 
e exhaust the ribbon and well this must be 20 to well 25 to 30 plus years old this ribbon and it still it still works it's not completely dried up yet in all, all that time so um, to do a test page what we have to do is switch it off you hold down line feed and then switch it on and then it will show you what it can do There we go, so that's the demo page. You can see it's printed, it's actually worked absolutely fine. The only thing is it's not 100% readable because it's only got eight pins as opposed to nine. Um, I, don't, I don't even think they're quite lined up properly, so it's, it's looking a little bit wonky, but you can see all the different fonts that it has. We've got uh, utility, we've got near letter quality, which is, it says for high quality correspondence. It's not quite as good as a, a daisy wheel printer or a laser printer but it you know it's very readable it does the job um, then we've got these uh, super speed these super speed draft modes and these 17 characters per inch modes and then the double width ones which um, they'll look all right uh, this again this is only a nine pin printer so it's not the same sort of quality that you get of a, of a 24 pin printer but again it's it's quite serviceable, you know, and it's only a very small printer as well, so it's about as good as you'd expect. Right, so I've just put the paper in the uh, other way round, um, and it has another self-test mode. This will basically just print out the character set continuously, so if we switch it off and hold down line feed and select... Uh, it just does that continuously and um, if we put the top on because you're supposed to run it with the cover on uh, it does actually do quite a good job of making it a little bit quieter oops didn't quite press it right It's a bit quieter with the um, lid on, but it's, it's still a bit loud when you're using it in a house rather than a, an office or a workshop or anything. Uh, anyway, it works, so I think I'll take the head out and uh, have a look at what, what uh, makes the head work. So to take the head out, uh, there's just this retaining clip here, and then it just comes out, and uh, you just see there's a little um, PCB connector on there, and... Uh, that's the head mechanism. Now, I don't know how prone these are to wearing out. They, you can, um, you know, they, they are designed to be replaced. Uh, these printers are intended for very, very long service lives, often in harsh environments. So, again, they are designed to be replaced. But how long these actually last for, um, I don't typically, I don't know. So that's just a, a close up of the actual head itself with the individual pin sticking out. You, if you paying close attention you might notice that one of them's missing. It's actually held together with these with this uh, re retaining clip. Um, it's a bit difficult to show on camera. I'll just see if I can... pry that off somehow. I wouldn't be surprised if you're supposed to use a special tool for this. One of them's already undone. And then basically the whole thing just falls to pieces. So that there is just a big heat sink to help keep it cool. Um, this here is uh, basically some potting compound. 
uh, to attach the circuit board. I think I've had a go at removing this. In fact, yeah, you can actually see what I've done. Um, these connections here are where all the uh, solenoids for the pins are connected. And I think this in the middle, which we can see, if you're paying close attention, you might notice the um, there's no solder on. I think that's where the thermistor was, or is. So that's probably why it's not not showing the error. Now I don't know if the thermistor was faulty, or if there's a fault in in the printer itself, which wasn't reading the temperature properly. I don't know, and I never figured that out. Um, but the point is, it does work, and to be fair, I'm probably not going to use. I'm probably not going to use the printer enough to risk it overheating, so it doesn't really matter if if that's um, it doesn't really matter if, if it's not reading the temperature properly. And this comes out. So this is just a like a, a guide which guides all the pins from a big clump into a straight line like, like I'm doing with my fingers. And here are the actual pins. So here are the actual pins, and hopefully the autofocus will stay will stay focused on them. And you can see that's that's where they are. And if you give them a bit of a tug, you'll just see they come in and out. Uh, and that's because there's uh, little solenoid mechanisms in there, which will push them in and out and strike against the ribbon. So there's not an awful lot to show you because it, it is an incredibly simple mechanism and I think that's why these printers uh, were made for, for so long because uh, it's a very simple, reliable and, and fairly inexpensive mechanism. I mean, these sorts of printers, um, Oki don't make them anymore, uh, Epson still make them. Uh, they're only like, for the low end ones, they're only like two to three hundred pounds for the whole printer. and. I know that sounds expensive compared to some, but uh, it's in in the grand scheme of things, it's not because you get a long lifespan out of these. Uh, you can print a lot; they, they they last a long time. They don't need many parts replacing, and and un unlike inkjet printers, which they sell usually at a loss, they make the money back from selling you the ink cartridges. With these, they don't. These ribbons only cost a few pound each and you'll get a, a lot of lifespan out of them and they don't dry up in the same way that ink cartridges can once they've been used as I said this this is this ribbon's been open since the 1990s and it's I mean it's a bit dried up it's a bit dried up but it, you know it still works it's still it's still readable yeah the the, the guide comes apart so I've just set I've just taken the little plastic piece off the end to, so that I can get the pins all lined up and then uh, I can just uh, put it back together, hopefully. There it is, back together. Right, well, getting those clips on was a pain, but I've got it back together. So I'll just uh, put it back in the uh, printer. Just literally just... Um, I was going to say it just slots in there, but at least, at least it should do. There we go. And the uh, retention clip just moves back in place. Cartridge goes in. And the power goes on. So while I've got the screwdrivers out, we might as well have a quick look inside. Um, this is the uh, platen knob, this is where the paper goes in. It doesn't quite seem to detect the presence of paper quite properly, so I'm not, not actually certain quite where the, the switch is. Um, there is a switch somewhere. Um, might be, I, I, I don't know actually, uh, but this is the printer circuit board, in fact that there looks like a date code of 1495, so I'm going to guess this circuit board was made in 1995, that would make sense. Yeah, that's the main processor down there, it's uh, an 80C154, um, uh, uh, Intel design, copyright Oki85, so I don't know if um, Oki would have made that themselves, because I think Oki did make a lot of their own chips. Or oh, Intel might have made it, or it might be a microcontroller, an Intel microcontroller with Oki software. Uh, I'm not actually sure. Uh, there's another one there. 
Oki M6990, I think that says. Um, I don't know what that is. That There's got a label on it, so that's probably an EEPROM. And uh, here we've got the power supply, we've got a nice big transformer. Um, there's some stuff here. I'm, I'm not going to have a detailed look at that. I'm going to guess it's probably a linear power supply. Um, the newer model is called a, a, a 280 Eco, so um, I wouldn't be surprised if they just replaced the power supply with a, a switch mode power supply that's more efficient. Um, anyway, you can see compared to a laser printer, there's really not that much going on. You know, there's very little in the way of electronics. There's, it's, it's when when you open a laser printer up, there's just motors and rollers and ab absolutely everything. There's the circuit boards and cables going all over the place, and th there's absolutely sod all in here in comparison. Uh, this is where you plug in the serial card if you want an RS two three two interface. Um, looks there's a knockout plug here on the plastic, and there's some solder pads there. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what that would have been for. Uh, but here's the dip switches. Uh, you can configure it to do different things. Probably different fonts and different sizes. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head what, what they are, but they are all explained in the instruction manual. So if anyone's watching this and wants to know how to configure it, uh, Oki did include an instruction manual, and you can download a copy from their website. So uh, there, there is proper documentation uh, available. And... Uh, yeah, we can see on the plastic there's there's a mould date code of 19, uh, 1995, so yeah, I think this date's from 1995, so it's 2025 now, so I think that makes this 30 years old. So just before I put it back together, we'll just have a quick look at this mechanism. Uh, this here is just to switch between uh, individual single sheets and tractor feed. You can see the rollers in there move when I pull the lever. Um, in that position for single sheets it grips it against the platen nicely if you do that one it's a bit looser because the uh, sprockets on here uh, grip onto the tractor feed paper and you can undo these and move them around to accommodate different sizes of tractor feed paper and you can do the same on the other side uh, this here is just the paper holder uh, which pushes the paper against the, the, the platen um, there is a switch in there somewhere because when if it's if there's no paper when you open it up it automatically feeds the paper through. I think the switch is somewhere down there probably. Um, probably want some contact cleaner because it seemed a bit iffy earlier. And uh, I think that there will be the motor that drives it. So nice and easy to get apart and tape back together. There's a little uh, port here which you can undo to get access to the dip switches down there. Uh, just two screws to get the cover off and a couple of clips on the back. And the platen knob uh, just, just goes into the side like that.